you're still watching ways now the world kidney day is observed on the 20 um, on the second thursday of march each year with the primary objective of spreading awareness around the globe on the need for identifying kidney disease as a significant public health problem regular um, screening in high risk uh, group population helps in early identif identification of um, the, di the disease and the common causes of kidney disease include diabetes high blood pressure, urine infection, kidney stones, excessive use of painkillers, kidney infections, and others. Obesity, lack of exercise, also physical exercise, not drinking enough water, smoking, and um, family history are also some of the risk um, factors for kidney um, disease. So today, um, I, I'm sure a lot of people talked about this today. I don't know. I was reading somewhere, they say that, you know, too much water or too little water, so you just have to find a balance because me i like to preach water water drinking and all of that so i'm reading that there's also excess of water also causes um what's it called um kidney problems all right uti let me come to you you have any kidney history in your family okay so um so no history um although i did have a friend who um in fact two friends i had a friend who had chronic um, kidney disease who thankfully recovered um, and then I had another friend who um, had to have a kidney transplant and sadly eventually passed away. Um, the kidney is one of those things that I think we sort of take for granted um, until you see what people go through when they, they have to be on dialysis and the amount, I mean, it, it costs a crazy amount of money in Nigeria to be able to sustain dialysis for, for a prolonged amount of time. And of course, mm -hmm. having to get a transplant, you're looking to maybe go abroad in general, I mean, for something that is, you know, apart from the hered hereditary side of it, it can be quite preventable, you know, making sure that yeah. you're drinking enough water because mm. rarely will people get to the point where they will drink too much water. Yeah. There will be very few people who will actually, you know, people struggle to even drink two liters a day. You know, when Absolutely. I tell people that I drink four liters every day, you know, they raise eyebrows. So mm. um, the, the idea is that, you know, we keep, drinking a lot of water to flush those systems and keep mm -hmm. the kidneys, you know, functioning optimally. Because when it doesn't function, it just affects everything. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Uti, since I can't get over this, your pretty face this evening, let me start with you. <laughs> what did you find for us in the news? <laughs> so, um, so my headline says, a Papa gridlock, uh, Lagos vows to continue enforcement impounds 200 trucks in in 48 hours so this is speaking to of course our port in the apapa and Tinkan island um Tinkan part of lagos state um and all the issues that have been experienced on the apapa um Oshodi expressway with the trucks uh, essentially parking now this has been a long issue going on for for years now since the trucks were kicked out of of the ports from being able to park at the ports and then um, the complaints that they were not giving uh, appropriate truck stops to park. The government has done so many, uh, so many times there have been clashes between the truck drivers, LASMA and all of that. But this essentially is the government now coming out strongly again, following the creation of their e-call up system, which basically um, allows, um, I believe allows the trucks to um, have a sequence with which they can come into um, the port so that they're not essentially waiting because the idea is when the, the the cargo that they're meant to be carrying is ready to come out of the ports, basically they have to try and make their way up to the ports and there's all sorts of bribes and things they have to pay to get into the ports. So essentially the government is saying that this um, electronic call-up system is supposed to stop them from having to park all over the place, waiting for their place in the queue when their cargo um, is now available. So the Lagos State government is just reiterating that it's not going to have um, it's not going to accept these trucks parking on the road and causing significant gridlock. I think I talked about it on the show. Mm. I think the last time I was on the show when I was talking about my experience trying to get out of Fast yeah. um, and everywhere just being blocked by these trucks. I mean, they pose severe um, risks to, to pass it to drivers on the road because, Absolutely. you know, people can run into these trucks. They're not properly lit. People can run into them when they're parked. People can be robbed in the midst of those trucks and nobody would know. So they just pose a lot of challenges. Um, for what is a critical economic route in Lagos State. So kudos to the Lagos State government. I hope that eventually, this thing has been on for too long. I hope that eventually they will be able to put a stop to it. All righty. So because we're running out of time, quickly, I'll just take Tammy. What's your story for today? 
Okay, so my story is about a bill to ensure that each state gets female representation in the Senate on the way. Um, so there's a bill to amend the constitution, a constitutional amendment bill, to ensure that each state is represented by at least a female senator. And it's coming up for the second reading in the House of Representatives. So it's just to ensure that in each state, at least there's one female senator that is representing that state. I think that this is going to, you know, if this goes through, we're going to be talking about more women being involved in leadership, which, um, you know, there are, there are different sides to it. I was speaking with someone and her thought on it was that, well, if we have this, are we just going to be giving it to the women just because they're women? But then there's another perspective to it that says, I mean, we have federal character and federal character ensures inclusion from different states. So it would also be nice to have some sort of, you know, gender inclusion, especially because we know that, you know, in politics, it's a male dominated space and there's still that idea of patriarchy enshrined in people's culture and mindset. So I think this will be helpful. I, I'd like us to push this bill. Um, it goes for second reading in the House of Rep. And I, I think it's a really great idea. And just to make one more comment on Uti's um, story. Do you mind, Uwa, can I go ahead? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, you know, I was recently coming from, I was traveling and I was just in between these trucks. I was in the car, I was in between these trucks and it was so scary. Like it was so scary. I didn't know when I said, I think we can burn all these trucks. Wow. You know, I didn't know when I said that because it was so scary. Some of them were speeding, some of them were, and I was just imagining what it feels like to really be in a place like a papa, hmm. right? So I think that the government is really beginning to make take actions. You know, for a while there's been a lot of talks, but going ahead to take such action actually would show that yeah. they actually serious. The truck owner, the truck drivers will see that they mean business. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think, we, do we have parks in this country, Uti? How do they manage trucking abroad? You've lived abroad, you know, how do they manage trucking? Because that's the question I'm, I'm wondering, do we have parks where these trucks can stay? Where the, when, there's, when is their turn? When, I mean, I'm sure the call-up system is supposed to give them turn by turn. You have a code and all of that. You come up and all of that. Do we have those parks where they can stay? That's the question. Yes. So, I mean, first of all, we must also remember that abroad, we're not wholly reliant on road transportation. Yeah. So we don't have, I mean, we do have quite a bit of trucks moving um, goods within the Interstate, country. Interstate, yes. But they also do this a lot at night. Mm. Yeah, they do this a lot at night. Um, and then you also have um, the railway that moves a lot of goods as well. Mm. So in terms of if you want to compare it, for instance, in the UK to places like Dover, where, you know, you have a lot of trucks coming in from the EU, they do have truck stops and mm -hmm. it's largely um, managed properly. But of course, they don't have anything near the volumes that we have. Mm -hmm. They don't have the bad roads that we have. Mm -hmm. And they also have well-behaved drivers. So they have drivers who stick to the rules. They have drivers who drive on the right lanes in their, in their, in, in their, um, on the motorways. So there's a lot of order that yeah. goes to it. But, you know, yes, they have truck stops. Yes, they have um, the trucks are even configured. So there's a maximum number of hours that a driver can drive before he has to take, you know, he has to rest. Mm -hmm. All those things are in place. So uh, it's a completely different ball game compared to what we have here. All right. OK, so I'll just quickly say my headline because uh, we've run out of time. Um, the federal government is saying we won't negotiate with bandits or terrorists. Um, that's what the federal government is saying. That according to him, that... Um, that negotiating with criminals would suggest weakness and incapa incapacity rather on the part of the government. He said that the government would not succumb to blackmail and the use of criminals um, to harass innocent citizens. So hopefully um, this talking tough would will see the results because really I don't have time you know, to, to, to delve on this. Um, but we'll take a break. When we return, we'll, <laughs> we'll focus on accountability in governance. I know a lot of people are itching to call today. Stay with us. We'll be right back.